Well, hello and welcome to the first live stream of 2022 for Chasing Sound. My name is Brian Sudich and I am happy to have you here. Um, man, very excited to get back to doing these. I was missing them. Uh, have a lot of cool stuff planned for today's live stream. Um, first live stream of 2022. Uh, been doing a lot of planning in January. So um, that's my main thing, you know, planning the year ahead. Uh, we talked about it a little bit on the last live stream when we were going over guitar lessons and all sorts of different things. But um, yeah, really doing a lot of planning for January and uh, kicking into high gear, I think, in February. So kind of just getting my feeding uh, this month and, and planning out all the different things that I want to do. And then, uh, yeah, from February on, we're going to do it. Hey, what's going on? I just, uh, I see Simon in the chat, I see Rise, I don't know if that's how I say your name still, you've been in the chat for a long time, um, but yeah, hi, um, so, got a couple cool things, Come some changes coming to the newsletter, um, got some uh, changes coming to the newsletter, got a cool lesson on triads in a couple, a couple of minutes, uh, <laughs> a little bit later, and um Got some picks that I want to show you and, and, and make some quick remarks on, and we're going to talk about that. But uh, yeah, just really excited to be back to doing these. Um, did like a newsletter at the beginning of this year. Got another newsletter going out tomorrow. Um, been into all sorts of cool things at the beginning of the year here. Um, been really messing around with the Fractal FM3. I've been talking about that in our Discord. A lot of fun. And... Uh, going to be using one of their new amps today on the stream, kind of just getting my uh, my feet wet with it. It's called the uh, Fractal Buttery Amp, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying out their new beta firmware on there, and that's been a lot of fun. Um, also, been working through this book right here. I mean, an another Fundamental Changes book, kind of like a wacky, uh, wacky cover there. But this is from Chris Zupa. And the reason I decided to get this was because uh, Chris recently came back to YouTube, which I was really excited about because he always does fun metal covers and uh, shows us how to play them on YouTube. Go check out his channel on there. And uh, this is really cool. You know, has stuff like uh, uh, sweet picking and um, lots of techniques, lots of stuff with uh, economy picking and alternate picking. Kind of in, when I do practice technique, I'm kind of... Um, using this book along with the stuff from Chris Brooks, which has been a lot of fun. So a lot of things going on. Chris Brooks and, and Chris Zupa's books for uh, picking and technique style. I've been doing um, a lot of uh, Corey Wong's course, a couple courses on True Fire between Ariel Posen and Josh Smith. So that's all been a lot of fun. Um, if you're working on anything too, like any courses or any books, you should, should let me know in the chat. That'd be really cool. Um, or in the comments. Uh, recently, this week, <laughs> I was uh, given a set of the Arsenal. Let's take a quick look here on the screen share. But yeah, I was getting uh, the Arsenal picks. Attack picks reached out to me, and I wanted to talk about them quickly. Um, they are interesting, to say the least. Uh, I was talking about these in our Discord, too. Just wanted to make some quick comments on them, if you see these making the rounds. Uh you know, on, on your guitar Instagram. Um, so yeah, I've been trying these today and, uh, I don't know, you know, I, I, I'm not sure what to say here. Um, let me show you one of their picks. This is the, let's see if this will focus. This is, it's, this is called the stealth and it's kind of stealthy cause it didn't even want to get into focus there. This is called the stealth. Um, this is the one I like best. I'm not a huge fan of the material that's being used here. I think these were 3D printed, maybe. <laughs> um, I do like these grips. There's some pretty cool grips here. And you see it has the beveled edges. Uh, out of all the picks that they sent me in this arsenal of picks, I would say that would probably be my, my favorite one. And then what they're known for are these style picks. So this is one called the Surge. Let's see if I can make it happen. This is very exciting uh, live stream stuff. There we go. You can see there's some some edges that are not 100% here. That's called a surge. And then most importantly, this one is one of their attack picks. You can see they have these funky ridges. 
uh, on the end of the pick. And then finally, you got these guys, which are the blades, I believe. So they have all these funky ridges. Um, I mean, I gave them a really good go this, this uh, afternoon, and I wasn't 100% sure about them. Um, if you play acoustic guitar, you might want to check them out. Go visit their website and, and see what you think. Uh, they weren't for me, but they, they might be for you. Here is the uh, all the picks that they have. The Stealth, the Blade, uh, and then I picked up the Arsenal, which is about $10.99. They give you like the full suite of their picks. Um, yeah. So Simon is saying they do look really strange, worse than your description. <laughs> are they even slightly musical? The only reason that I would use these are uh, for probably acoustic strumming because even this stuff like the the ambush and the attack, the ambush and the attack are the ones that I had the biggest um, difficulty with. I feel like, you know, as much as I tried to use my regular picking style, I couldn't get them going. And, uh, I, you know, it was kind of like just caught up on the strings. Um, I can see if you kind of adjust your picking style that some of those might work for you. The reason that they're called the attack pick, as far as I know, is because they're supposed to be attacking the strings from multiple spots on the pick. You know, no one has really focused on that where they, they hit the string from multiple angles. A lot of people focus on the grip or maybe what the pick is made out of. Um, a lot of the red bears that I use, you know, that's a really fancy material. And, uh, you know, some of the other picks, again, focus on stuff like Delrin and all that stuff. But um, but these, yeah, I'm not 100% sure what the material is. I wasn't a huge fan. But um, any of those attack picks, the ones that were, let's see here, the ones that were the blades. So these ones right here where they have like just a couple of ridges. Again, my strings were kind of getting stuck in the middle of, uh, of some of those areas. But... Um, I do think that if you use them for strumming and you, again, you kind of like alt, you know, changed up your picking style, they might be kind of cool for strumming. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking back to the days of something like the jellyfish, uh, where, you know, they, they said that you would have like all sorts of weird sounds with this funky pick. Um, kind of the same thing here, you know, uh, but, uh, not a huge fan. <laughs> so Thank you, Attack Picks, for sending them. I will be messing around with them a little bit more on an acoustic guitar. They weren't for me on an electric guitar, but, you know, we'll see. If I if I do try them again on an acoustic guitar, which I'm pretty sure I will, um, I will report back. But for the time being, uh, you know, not a huge fan. Um, so I mentioned some changes coming to the newsletter. Uh, tomorrow we got a new one coming out. I am, you know, I was reading a lot of newsletters over the break, over, you know, uh, holiday break, and... Uh, one of the newsletters I read, I, I forgot what, which one it was, but somebody was like, who has time for these like 1,200, 1,500 word newsletters? And that's basically what Six String Sunday is every Sunday, you know, for sure over a thousand words. So I said to myself, um, let me see if I can limit myself to a thousand, uh, you know, not a thousand words. Let me see if I could limit myself to one or three sentences per link, because I do like to do some commentary. Um, and tell you guys what I think about some of the links. So I did that. Um, I think the current issue that's going out tomorrow is still over a thousand words, but uh, I did my best, you know. Um, I was thinking, you know, if you guys are, are in the Discord or if you're in the chat right now or if you're leaving a comment later on and you are a subscriber and you do enjoy the newsletter, um, I was thinking about maybe like some new sections in the future. Um, maybe something for music recommendations. I do touch on music a lot in tomorrow's newsletter, um, like some new music coming out, got some new stuff from Alex Lifeson, some new stuff from Korn, uh, a couple different bands, a uh, new song from Muse. So uh, yeah, if you want to see any new sections, let me know. Um, obviously, I've been messing around with the Fractal a lot, maybe a section for patches. I know that doesn't really work for everybody, but um but yeah, we'll see. I'm definitely this month looking to kind of tweak the newsletter and, and see how I can make it a little bit different, kind of freshen it up a little bit. Um, but yeah, I did want to talk about a couple of uh, posts and videos that I saw and that are going into tomorrow's newsletter. So let's hop over here where um, we have this cool video from Cracking the Code, Troy Grady's site, where we had this guitarist, uh, Wim Den Herder, uh, playing his song Mad Max. And the cool thing, as you can see, there's, there's the magnet here they're using to record uh, both hands. Um, 
the cool thing about this is that he's tuning his guitar totally in fourths, which is pretty interesting. I thought it was uh, a, a lot of fun. He's tuning the guitar into fourths, and as you can see here, it's so cool. His picking style is a lot of fun. I always love to see that. Um, and also, uh, his playing and his tone is just incredible. Uh, so go check this video out. And if you want to see, um, I like what Troy was talking about. This is not the full interview, but I like what Troy was talking about here and uh, talking to this guitar uh, guitarist about his tunings and how he kind of like wraps his brain around working in altered tunings, especially this is a, a little funky one where you tune the guitar in fourths, kind of like get away from the B string being uh, as difficult. Uh, he was saying that he kind of like thinks of things, you know, a, a little bit from a... Um, theory standpoint, but he's also doing a lot of patterns, so he knows where he is on the fretboard. So go check this video out. The Cracking the Code videos are always really, really cool. Um, I know a lot of people in our Discord chat are fans of Troy Grady. I have been watching his videos for a couple of years, and I really like what he's done for my my picking. You know, we were talking about how to hold the pick today in, in the Discord a tiny bit, and that's been my, you know, that's been my real favorite. Um, part of watching Troy's videos. You know, you get to see guys like Marty Friedman or uh, Michelangelo Angelo Badio, all these guys who have their uh, their different playthrough styles, and it's, it's a lot of fun. So go check this out. Um, also, I was a fan of this. <laughs> not a great place to stop the video, but I was a fan of this Tomo Fujita um, video where he's talking about different country licks. This is he always does these these videos called like three levels, three levels of blues, three level of country. I'm gonna see if I could play the audio here, but what I did like was let me know if you could hear the the video in the chat. Um, what I did like was this cool uh, pedal steel thing that he showed here. Kind of reminds me of Sleepwalk. <laughs> so if you're getting, if you're looking to get some cool, uh, you know, country lap steel style sounds, I think that was pretty cool. You know, um, Tomo is a teacher over at Berkeley. He was John Mayer's teacher if you don't know who he is. And uh, he always comes out with fun videos. I, I think he's a lot of fun. So go check that out on Tomo Fujita. And his channel, like I said, has tons of awesome stuff on there right now. Um, I also dug this video from Robert Baker. It's a short one. It's only two and a half minutes. He's playing that really nice, uh, sweet Fender Strat. Um, and he's talking about a riff from Cliffs of Dover. I mean, so many people have done lessons on this at this point, right? But um, yeah, he's doing this lesson on Cliffs of Dover, and he's talking about this second box of the pentatonic shape, um, where uh, he has a pretty cool pentatonic riff, and he's talking about how he thinks that, you know, Eric Johnson's riffs don't always sound pentatonic, right? And the cool thing about this, and, you know, speaking about what we're going to talk about in a little bit with triads, um, there's the riff in here, you know, I won't play it because I don't want to get copyright strike, but... Um, check out this this video because he has a G major triad right in the middle. Yeah, if we stop it here, you know, if you look at 17, 16, 15 on the fretboard, that's your that's your triad right there. So there's a triad shape right in the middle of this riff. Um, really, really cool. And this is just a fun riff to to learn from, from Eric Johnson. So I always love Robert Baker's videos. He is a lot of fun. Uh, all, his, all his videos are cool. He does a lot of stuff on pentatonics. Maybe that's why I'm so drawn to uh to what he does um up next we got this really cool video from nick bocott who has been doing a ton of stuff for sweetwater lately um he was the guitar player for grim reaper a long time ago and this is actually on ben eller's channel so i think ben and uh fluff from uh, riffs beards and gear were at sweetwater uh in the last couple weeks and they're doing a lot of content for their own channels for sweetwater and everything um, so this is really cool because Nick, I learned so much from Nick uh, about all these bands from, from the UK. Not only is this a battle of the UK and US riffs, um, but yeah, Nick has just like so much information about all these bands. And, and the cool thing is that, you know, the bands that he picks, he doesn't always do the most obvious song. Um, 
you know, he, he talks about that in the video and it's a long one. It's about, it's almost an hour's worth of, of different riffs. And the cool thing is that Nick and Ben go back and forth, um, playing these, these different riffs. You got stuff like Metallica, Megadeth, uh, I think there's Judas Priest in there. There's Dokken. There's all sorts of stuff. And it's really fun. It's funny. Uh, great playing, great tones. They're plugged into this really awesome, uh, set of Soldano heads in the back going into that Mesa cab. So it's really cool. Check it out. Let me know who you think won, uh, UK versus US. I know, Simon, you're in the chat. Um, but yeah, I mean, all awesome riffs all around, really. But uh, very, very cool video from Ben and Nick. Nick is always awesome. If you haven't seen him on uh, Sweetwater recently, you got to go check out some of his Sweetwater videos because he's hilarious. He's a great player. Here he's playing. I can't, I don't know if it's a Jackson or what, but he has a... a Simpsons version of Dimebag on his uh, on his guitar, so really really cool. Um, what else do we have? Uh, we've been talking about this a lot in the in the chat lately. Uh, been huge news for PRS. Not only did they release um, a ton of new guitars for 2022 in their regular line and their SE line, but you know this is probably the biggest guitar that they're, they're talking about um, this year, just because uh, John Mayer, Silver Sky did so well to begin with and uh simon's saying here uk wins obviously i mean yeah i guess, I guess right i mean i don't know metallica's not from the uk are they <clears throat> sorry i'm just i'm just joking around no there, there's there's good riffs all around seriously and um they're a lot of fun <laughs> no there, there's so many good bands on the list um but yeah this john mayer strat uh is you know calling it a Strat, looks exactly like a Strat. The Silver Sky, the original Silver Sky sold out, you know, uh, was one of the most popular models uh, of the last couple of years. And now they have the SE version, it's $850. Um, a bunch of different people did uh, videos for this guitar, including John Mayer, Ariel Posen, that I mentioned before, uh, a couple other guys. Um, comes in four color configurations, so Dragon Fruit, Evergreen, Moon White, and Stone Blue. They're all kind of interesting colors. Um, I'm trying to think of picking this up. I've been selling a couple different things on the Reverb uh, lately, so I got to see what what happens here. Um, but yeah, that's my plan. I mean, do I need another Strat? Not really, but um, I the only Strat I have was a part Strat that was you know part Squire, part everything. The neck is is awesome, but because um, it's been played so so many years, but uh, I don't have a real great strat right now i got my charvel uh but i don't consider that a strat i got humbuckers in it i'm looking for something like this um and i think they're gonna do a, a potential lot of damage here to uh fender's um share of of what they sell this year with this guitar because i can't imagine that's a really good price as far as i'm concerned so i feel like they will be sent you know selling a lot of these one of the favorite videos that came up out of the 15 to 20 videos that I saw on the day that this guitar dropped, and uh, Simon actually did, uh, Simon from our Discord actually did bring this up, is that Mary Spender did a comparison. So, I mean, the biggest thing here is that, you know, you got uh, an $850 guitar and a guitar that's a little bit over, what, you know, 2000 close to $3,000. Um, I love these types of videos because, you know, of course, you're not, you're not going to get to play it. Uh, by watching a video, but the sonic differences, to me, and I mean, being a guitar player, being an engineer, I couldn't really, I couldn't tell too much. I mean, maybe one guitar is a little bit brighter than the other, um, but otherwise, you know, it's very minimal. I, I, I know they're built uh, in America, and one's built in Indonesia, <laughs> um, but I've been hearing only good things. Actually, I'm part of a uh, Ariel's uh, Patreon, and he did a Q&A the other day about this guitar and kind of being part of the experience. And he said, you know, he wasn't a huge PRS guy in the first place, but that, you know, he has an original Silver Sky and that he obviously played this guitar a lot and he didn't see any, um, you know, huge differences between it. And he liked how it played. Of course, they set the guitar up for him for slide so he can do his uh, his whole Ariel Posen thing. But um yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I'm kind of excited to get this. I'm gonna, I'm attempting to sell a bunch of different things on Reverb, some stuff on eBay, and uh, it's gonna be like the Fractal I have. You know, I'm not gonna really pick this up until I have the money for it, and uh, I'm excited to get it. So look forward to that. Maybe, maybe February. We'll see. 
we'll see how the stock is of, of this guitar and we'll see how quickly I can sell stuff. Um, but yeah, go check out Mary's video. And then finally, before we get into triad stuff, uh, I, I was digging this article from uh, guitar.com where they talk about uh, potentially uh, the V being the guitar of the year for Gibson. Um, as you can see in this screenshot, there's a couple of things that I didn't, I didn't know here. Um, let's scroll down a little bit. First, you got stuff like the Dave Mustaine V's that are supposed to be coming out next month. Uh, as you, you might have heard, I think I talked about it here. Uh, Dave moved over to Gibson, the Gibson brand, and he's going to have a lot of different guitars coming out through Gibson. These are some of his V's that are slated out for next month. Um, we also have uh, Richie Faulkner guitar potentially coming out. Um, Judas Priest uh, potential model with an Epiphone, which is like a really cool finish. And it looks like a Floyd. Then uh, I mentioned this in the newsletter a little bit ago. Kirk Hammett teased this purple V. We haven't gotten any real official things from... Is there, by the way, I always say this, but are there enough ads on this freaking website? Jeez. Um, but... <laughs> Kirk Hammett teased this guitar uh, the other day when he was uh, playing with Metallica on his Instagram, and uh, you know this might be uh, an option for Kirk. I think that would be really cool. It's a cool looking uh, V. Reminds me of what he had, not color wise, but you know what he had during the Kill 'Em All days. And then finally, this is the one that I didn't have any idea about, but Adam Jones, you know, they released uh, his um, Silver Sky. Silver Sky, Silver Burst, uh, Les Paul. And they're saying that some people saw this Silver Burst V uh, at some recent tool shows. So I don't know if this will be coming out too, but that's kind of kind of interesting, right? I mean, uh, I'm, I've never been a huge V player because I feel like they're awkward to play sitting down. Um, but this is kind of cool. Very exciting stuff to see from, from Gibson. I think they're doing some cool things, you know, some things I question them about, but, uh, stuff like this, if they keep on pushing out good, uh, Gibson models and that aren't, you know, crazy prices, which some of them are. And if they keep on pushing out good Epiphones, which I've, you know, heard a lot about the ES335 Epiphone version and so on, I think it's going to be an interesting 2022. So I don't know if you are checking out any new gear or, you know, what you're getting into, but let me know in the comments. Are you looking forward to some piece of gear this, this year? You know, are you looking to get uh, a new guitar, maybe uh, some new pedals, a modeler, a new amp? Let me know in the comments. I'd like to know um, what you're getting into. So, yeah, that was pretty quick, right? Um, and now I want to do a lesson all on triads. Um, I've been, like I said, I've been taking a lot of different lessons lately on, on TrueFire and elsewhere. And uh, I just think I have, you know, when you learn something is typically the best time to go and teach it. Um, so I've been writing down my thoughts on uh, on triads, on closed voice triads, and uh, I just wanted to do a quick lesson. I don't know how much. I, I have a couple things written down and um, just wanted to show you how easy it is to play triads all over the neck uh, with only a couple different patterns that you have to remember. And some things that I've been doing and maybe you can do uh, to help remember them. Um, I know I talked about this on the last live stream. I definitely need another camera for this live stream so I can get um, a better shot of the guitar neck. I'm going to go grab my guitar. But yeah, that's that's one thing that I have to have to do this year is get I, I do have a DSLR. I just got to figure out um, with my iMac how I'm going to set everything up. But um, but yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about triads, uh, both major and minor, and how you can understand uh, not only the notes that they are, but also, um, you know, the, the formula behind them, why they are what they are, uh, how you can find them from, from frets zero to 12 and then from 12 on. And, uh, yeah, let me go grab a guitar and we're going to get right into it. All right. I'll be right back. All right, we are back. Uh, if you are in the chat, Simon, <laughs> let me know if you can hear this guitar. 
I think I'm going to turn the drive off for this lesson. Cannot hear it. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. Still can't hear it, huh? Where it's the worst acoustic guitar ever. Well, I'll have to look into that. I have it going through my interface here, and uh, I'm using uh, this thing called Loopback from Rogue Amoeba to kind of combine um, two different things. Let me see here. Uh, You know what? I think I see why. What about now? Yes? Awesome. All right. You know, I'm using this software called Ecamm Live. It's one of the best softwares for Mac. I pay about, I think it's like $20 a month. Um, thank you, Simon. I appreciate it, man. Uh, I'm using, it's about $20 a month, and it, uh, you know, lets me do all these cool uh, going back and forth between scenes and everything. Um, I, I really want to do some interviews coming up in the next uh, couple months, which allows me to do, put these nice overlays. Um, and as I mentioned, Totally a, a bonehead thing here by me, but um, but yeah, uh, it was um, it was something with loopback. Uh, give me one more sec. I know this is this is horrible, but give me one more sec, and we'll be right back and we'll get into the lesson. I just want to check one more thing with uh, levels, and we'll get to it. All right, needed a little bit of coffee as well. All right, so we're gonna talk all about triads today. Um, the cool thing about triads is that, you know, you can only have, I mean, I know this sounds stupid, but you know, sometimes people, we were talking so much on the last couple of live streams about, about triads and where to find notes on the neck. We were talking about power chords. We were talking about, um, uh, major scales, all that stuff. We were talking about pentatonic boxes. Um, there was a lot of a lot of lessons last year, so if you haven't watched the live streams, go check them out. Um, but yeah, the main things that you know I've been really wrapping my head around more. I mean, I've been playing guitar for so long now, but there's some basic things that you're like, man, I, why didn't I think about this, or like, why didn't I adapt my practice um, schedule to this uh, to learn this way? Um, so, you know, the major scale. And you know a major chord is is basically your your starting point for so many things, right? Um, what we're going to talk about today is that you know there's an uh, there's obviously just one note per twelve frets on on every string. I know it sounds very very basic, but you know if we start here, I'm going to turn the drive off um, on this. Um, you know you have G here on the third fret of the the, the low E string. And then that's it. I mean, that's it until you, you cross the 12th fret again. Uh, and then, you know, up here on the 15th fret, you got G again, right? So 
sometimes people are like make things harder than it has to be um and it, it doesn't have to be that way uh so um let me adjust the camera here too you can see all my my messy books okay i think it'll be easier to see this way there we go that's a little bit better right um so yeah you got you got a, a one note um, before the 12th fret, and then you got the same note after the 12th fret. This is a 24 fret guitar, so this the same note is only appearing uh, really, you know, two times unless it's something like an open string where it's appearing three times. Um, but that's that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is is really thinking about the theory of what we're working on today. So today we are going to uh, work on um, major chords. And how to understand how to make a minor really quickly, how to make them. We're not going to get in, in depth about um, other types of chords, but we're focusing on major and minor. But then once you learn those two, you can also do augmented chords. You can do um, diminished chords and so on. So I did a quick thing here uh, where I wrote down uh, what we're going to be working on today. So we're going to be working on um, A, A major, and all its inversions. So the first thing you got to know is... <laughs> is right here, the major, right? So a major chord is, you know, an A major chord is A, C sharp, and E. And I wrote down here, you know, A is the is the one, obviously, C sharp is the three, the third of, of that chord, and then uh, E is the fifth. So why is that? You know, why is it A, C sharp, E? Um, the first thing is that you have a, a major third here from A to C sharp, which is, um, two whole steps. So if you look on the neck, if we're going from A to C sharp, you're starting here, right? On the fifth fret of the low E, and then here's a, here's a whole step, and here's another whole step, right? So now we're on C sharp. So that's A to C sharp. That's two whole steps. And then uh, if you're going from C sharp, sorry, C sharp to E, uh, it's one whole step and one half step. So here is the C sharp again. And then we're going up to E, which is on the 12th fret, which is a half step and a whole step. So that's your that's your major chord, right? So that's just the, the, the simple theory behind it is that your major chord is A, C sharp, E. And that's the same thing for every other chord, right? It's not just, it's not just the A major chord. The same thing goes for the G major chord. So if we went down, it would be G, B, D. And then if you wanted to make it minor, as you can see here, all you have to do is flat the third. So in our case for the A major chord, all we're, all we're doing here is uh, flatting the third. So instead of a C sharp, oh man, I can't do this. Instead of a C sharp, you got a C. So now it's one flat three five. And then the, the kind of formula that you get here is uh, you know, kind of reversed, where it's a whole step and a half step towards from the first to the third. And then um, from the flat third to the fifth, it's two whole steps again, a major third, right? So these are the things that we need to know. I'm just, I wanted to talk about this because, you know, so many people are like, hey, learn this pattern and, and learn the shape and then you're good. And I mean, yeah, you can be good. Um, that wouldn't be a problem, but it's good to know this stuff behind it too. Um, I don't think the notes are always the most important thing. Today, it's good to know the notes, and it's good to um, also know um, the the relationship of, of the chord, right? So not only are we going to be working on the major chord, but we're also going to be working on its inversions. What is that, right? So the major chord, the first root position would be a is the root, and then you have the third and the fifth, so that's A, C sharp, E. The next one would be C sharp is on the top, so the third is on the top. Then you have E, and then you have A. That's never going to change. That's how the first inversion is. And then the second inversion would have the fifth on the top, which is E, then the root, which is A, and then C sharp again on the on the top. So let's, let's start getting into it. That was as much... <laughs> theory as I'm going to do today. So there's a couple cool things about this. There's a couple common shapes. And um, again, you're always using those, those, uh, you're always using those um, uh, shapes to understand the relationship of the chord. So let's just get into it. I know I've been, uh, it's easier to play on the fretboard, right? 
So what's the first thing that we're going to start on? I want to just get out of the way that we're not going to be using open strings to start off this, these chords. We might use an open string uh, somewhere, um, you know, as a uh, as an extra string above, but we're we're going to start on the actual fretboard. So if we're starting on the low E here, what is our first uh, using a, a fretted note? What is our first note that we can hit for an A, you know, C sharp and an E? So the first chord, the first note that we're going to do is A, right? Which is on the fifth fret of this low E string. That's an A. Um, then on the next, on the next string, we're going to play C sharp, which is here, which is the, you know, the third. And then up here, the second fret of the D string, we have our E, right? D, D sharp, E. Uh, again, you know, a lot of people know this is C, third fret on the uh, A string to make your C chord. Well, here's C sharp, right? So what do we have? We have A, C sharp, and E. So this is the this is the shape here. Fifth fret, fourth fret, second fret. That's the first shape. Now the cool thing about that is, you know, you have A, C sharp, E, right? Now this is the benefit of knowing not only the notes but the um, the uh, the relationship of what, what they are, right? So we know to make a minor chord, we have to lower the third, a half step. So you got A, C sharp, E. All you gotta do is take your ring finger up and you and use uh, your in, uh, your middle finger uh, to do one. You just lower that fourth fret down to a C, a regular C, and now you have uh, a C minor, uh, A minor chord. So you have A major, and then, right? So five four, five four two, and then five three two is the minor version of that, right? So that's it. You have a new way. I mean, the cool, the, the reason we're going over this at all today is because you know a lot of people know um, they're. They're open chords. We talked about power chords a lot the other week. Uh, you know, a lot of people do bar chords. Right? That's fine. But then you're kind of stuck. Uh, you're stuck in one section of the neck a lot of times. And, you know, the cool thing about this is that you can find your chords almost anywhere learning this method. So that was our first one. Five, four, two. And five, three, two for the minor version. Now, the next one we need is going to be um, the first inversion, so C sharp, E, A, right? So we're going to move all the way up here to C sharp. And this pattern is something like this. So C sharp, right? Then this note would be E, which is seventh fret of the A string. And then seventh fret of the D string is our A, is our root. So what do we have here? We have the C sharp, the third on the bottom. That's the first inversion. As you can guess, to make this a minor version, you would just do do this. You would do 8th fret, which is C, and then 7th fret, 7th fret for the rest of the chord. Right? So that's that's our next inversion where it's 977 seven, or 877. Seven, for the minor. And then to wrap it all up, as you might have guessed, with that A, C sharp, E, the next inversion starts on E, which is, where is that? It's all the way up here on the 12th fret. Then right under it on the 12th fret of the A string is A. And then on the 11th fret, if this is D, you know, D, which is, then C sharp is right before it. So you have this sort of uh, shape where it's 12, 12, 11. And if you want to do 12, 12, 10, you have the minor shape of that, right? So let me show you, let me show you the shapes again. Um, here is A, C sharp, E. That's your root. That's nine, seven, seven. And then 12, 12, 11. Or 12, 12, 10 for the minor version. Now the cool thing is that once we know those shapes, which is, you know, we can use those shapes all over the sixth string. So let's say 
you want to do uh, G, right? The If we move this shape down, we can instead do something like this. That's G, B, D, you know? Um, if we move this shape up to, um, to B, you have a major chord there, C. You have your minor chord. So those are the cool things about the shapes is that they're they're very movable all over the, the fretboard. It's just up to you whether you want to decide to start with the root or if you want to start with the third or if you want to start with the fifth, right? So the cool thing is now that we've learned that, the next set of strings starting on the fifth string, um, we have the same exact shapes, which is awesome. So let's let me show you that. So now we have an open A, but I told you we're not going to start with open strings. So then what would be the next note that we can have? Well, it's actually C sharp, which is the fourth fret on the A string. Now I told you they're the same shapes, right? So if it's if it's this C sharp up here, you gotta say, well, what shape can fit the the shape that we had seen on starting on the sixth string? So if you have the um, C sharp here, and then you have the E here, and then you have the A. Which is actually four two two. If we start on the um, if we start on the fifth string, right? And as we said before, the, the the third is on the bottom, so we just flatten that to three two two. Kind of sounds a little bit like uh, Soundgarden. So yeah, four two two. That is the first inversion uh, A chord, starting on the fifth string. Now this is C sharp, right? So what is gonna be the next one and what's gonna be the next shape? Well, here's C sharp, D, E. Now remember this pattern from up here where it's 12, 12, 11? Well, it's also the same here. Very cool, right? Like you gotta see where the shapes are and um, you know how to make it easier for, you, for yourself. So, so that's seven, seven, six, which is the fifth, the first, and the third. So you, your E, your A, and your C sharp. So how do we know this is E here, right, on the seventh fret? You can check it against the uh, low E string. How do we know that this is A on the seventh fret of the D string? We could do that octave trick I taught you about on the last stream to make sure that's A. And the same thing for C sharp, right? Use the octave tricks. Use as much stuff as available to you. So. That's seven, seven, six. Um, and the cool thing is if you go all the way up here, I can't show you that that well, but it repeats itself again. We talked about that in another live stream, right? Um, and then the last shape is the is the first shape that we did on the sixth string, but now we're starting it on the fifth string. So 12, 11, nine. That's A, C sharp, E. Or A, C, E for the minor. All right, so those three shapes work on both starting from the E string and the A string. Um, and the cool thing about that is, you know, not only do this for just A major and A minor, but do this for A, B, C, D, E, F, and G um, major and minor. So you can get this all over the fretboard and see, you know, where you're starting from. Um, and, you know, so if we have something like, uh, you know, this, this chord here, and you want to flatten it, you can even make, like I said, you can make um, diminished chords, you can make augmented chords, and so on. Now let's go on to the fourth string. And now the reason the fourth string gets a little tricky is because now our top string, when we're doing three strings in a row, is the B. Uh, it's tuned differently, so it's making stuff a little bit harder for us. So that's, that's the only pain thing that we have to deal with. All right, so let's get going. So here we have a D, Let's start with this E, right? So we wanna do, um, no, let's start with, uh, um, let's start with this, this right here at the second fret. So we got our E, we got our A, and we got our C sharp. So this is two, 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 starting from the fourth string. E, A, C sharp. We wanna make it minor. That's it, that's all we gotta do. Right, so that's E, A, C sharp. So the next thing that we're gonna do is look for an A because then we're going back to the first inversion. We started on the second inversion, 
We started on the second inversion and we're gonna go back to start uh, starting on the root again. So that's E, A, C sharp and E, A, C for uh, A minor. So E, F, G, A, right? So now we have our root position starting on the fourth string. So this is an A, C sharp, and an E. This is one of my favorite chords just because it, this is kind of what I was mentioning in the Robert Baker video earlier, that this is kind of a nice diagonal chord. Right? So you got uh, A, C sharp, E, and if you want to make it minor, just flatten that third. So that's A, and then uh, next we're gonna go up to A, B, C, C sharp. Now this is C sharp, uh, E, A. This is 11th fret, 9th fret, 10th fret. So this is, if you wanna flatten that. So we're starting on 11th fret, 9th fret, 10, which is the third, the fifth, and the one. So we're gonna lower the, the, the top string of that, which is our fourth string, down to a 10, nine, 10, which makes it um, that first inversion minor version. So that that's it, right? And then we only got one more string set to go. Um, so now we have A, C sharp that we did before, right? This is the only place on this, you know, on this chord that we're going to actually use an open string. So A, C sharp, E, uh, which is actually this shape right here. I really need to put new strings on this guitar. I've been playing this guitar so much and it needs new strings. So A, C sharp, E, right? So now we know if we're starting on A, C sharp, E, uh, this type of shape. Um, what we can do is we can uh, lower this note for the minor version. Um, and that's that first shape. So we can move it. Uh, so that's A, C sharp, E. So we know we need to go to uh, C sharp, the first inversion next. So we got A, B, C, C sharp. So now C sharp is going to be here. So we got six, five, five, another really cool, uh, easy, small chord to play. Um, and the cool thing about these is that, you know, if you're playing in a band and you don't want to take up all the sonic space, uh, especially when you're playing live, sometimes playing these little chords is, it's much nicer, right? You don't take up as much sonic space as uh, if you're going to play the full, the full bar chord. Um, okay, so anyway, back to the, the lesson. So we got this right here, which is we said C sharp, E, and A. So all you have to do to make this minor, take up all the sonic space all you have to do i appreciate you hanging out here simon too if you have any tips for triads let us know so you have c sharp uh e a all you have to do is make a mini bar here to make the minor version of that we only got one more to go which is um which is e so this one is e a which is you can see E, A, and C sharp. So this is nine, 10, nine. Which is our final A major chord. So this is the fifth, the first, and the third of that, of that A major chord. And if you wanna make it minor, you just do nine, 10, eight, So you're saying, uh, Simon, about uh, correct intonation. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if you're talking about the guitar it itself too. Um, with this guitar in particular, uh, I had some issues and I had to um, shorten or lengthen the strings to make sure that all the way up here,
my guitar is out of tune. It's not the intonation right now. Um, I do need to put a new set of strings on this, but I did get it going to where um, before the 12th fret and after the 12th fret, it was in really good shape um, with how it sounded. You know, I was playing a lot of stuff up here on the neck, uh, doing a recent course, and um, and yeah, so that that is a big deal. Um, you know, sometimes you'll have a nice chord down here, so like five, four, three, and then you'll go all the way up here. It sounds doesn't sound too good, but I know it's because is my guitar's out of tune. Um, but that's pretty much it. You know, that's it for um, for understanding the triads. Um, you know, understand that it's it's one three five. Understand that the minor version of that is one flat three five, and that those are the shapes, and that those are the shapes for every single thing. If you don't have enough space, so like, for instance, when we were doing this A major one, how do we do that if we're going down, you know, to G? Well, you just open up the open string, right? So you can use open strings. Um, uh, but just, you know, you got sometimes I think the best thing to do is like I did here, write it down on a piece of paper, write down the formula, write down the notes that you're looking to find. So you don't have to make it so hard on yourself. There's nothing cheating about that. Um, I think that's the best thing that you can do. And then just run that through every key, every key, A through uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, uh, major and minor. And then, um, you know, down the road, and even for myself, going to be working on some more spread triads for, uh, you know, just not to have such a close sound. Um, sometimes, you know, some of that sonic space on the lower strings is a little bit too much, even in a band setting. So you might want to, you know, play stuff starting on the fifth string or, or starting on the third string. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it. That's all I got today for triads. I hope that was helpful. Um, if you need any help with, you know, finding these patterns on the neck, feel free to reach out in the comments or feel free to reach out to me in our Discord. You can just head to chasingsound.com and uh, and I have something in there. Um, also in the weekly newsletter, there's a link to the Discord. So you can always pop in there, ask any questions that you like and uh, we'll get it going. I'm gonna see if I can make this triads lesson maybe its own video on its own. Let's see <laughs> um, if, you, if you guys think it was worth it. Um, or maybe I'll do another video just, you know, with a better shot of the neck, but I just wanted to jump on the stream here just cause I wanted to get back to doing streams and, uh, and, uh, I want to play right now. So I, I wanted to share, um, all this cool triad stuff that I've been dealing with. Um, I just think it's a lot of fun, right? And, uh, you, you know, it opens up the fretboard. Not only is it good for understanding the relationship of what you're playing on the fretboard, but I think it's also cool uh, for being able to find notes. Like I feel like my fretboard knowledge is becoming better because um, I'm putting in the work with these triads and like understanding where every note is that I'm playing. And now once I'm kind of combining the shapes um, with the string sets, I'm like, oh, well, you know, if I'm here, if I'm at the fifth fret and I'm playing this position, it has to be A, C sharp, and E. It has to be those notes. Uh, nothing changes there, you know? Like I, I feel like sometimes, you know, even when we get up to higher on the fretboard, the dusty side of the of, of the neck, right? It becomes uh, more of a mystery, but it doesn't have to be. That's something that I'm working on myself uh, last year, this year, even playing guitar for this long. Um, sometimes you get stuck into playing boxes or or different patterns, right? And it's, it's good to have those patterns to fall back on uh, and understand, but knowing the theory behind it, knowing that this is a, uh, a one, this is a three, and this is a five, and this is a flat three and a five, makes your 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 guitar playing that much better makes your note recognition that much better and when you're playing uh when you're playing the chords right or if somebody else is playing those chords in a, in a key signature and you want some really great target notes this is something else that i'm working on you want some really great target notes to play well now you have all these shapes and you know where the one three and five is all over the neck if you put in that work so that's awesome right it's definitely something to be excited about um and yeah uh Go check me out. Like I said, I'm chasing sound everywhere on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, uh, TikTok, Instagram, all over the place. So um, thank you for hanging out and thank you for catching this maybe on the replay. I'm going to be back in two weeks. And if you're not subscribed already, go subscribe to the newsletter. I'll see you over there. I'll talk to you guys soon.